What's going on everybody, it's Gormarn from Gormarn Tech and we have another pie hole video coming up and today is 5 things you need to know about pie hole. So everybody should be already running pie hole and in this video we're going to go with the 5 things you need to know for any kind of pie hole instance that you have running in your home lab. So let's get right into this video because you need to know this stuff. Coming in at number one, pie hole isn't going to block YouTube ads. As you can see here we are at the good old Barmine Tech channel and there's an ad in my video so no matter what this machine's using pie hole and it's always going to allow ads to play on youtube if you want to block youtube ads you actually need to put an ad block in line but no matter how you run pie hole it's always going to allow youtube ads to play it's never going to block them no matter what ad list you put in or however you configure your pie hole settings in the pie hole and you know in the ad list or if you try to do some sort of blocking or if you find some sort of trick it's not going to work it's never going to block youtube ads it's a topic that gets hit across on the subreddit and the pie hole wiki quite often and i'm pretty sure it's in the wiki too that's not going to be able to block it it can't do it consistently and it doesn't really do it at all if you try to turn off your ad blocker and you do it it's not going to i mean you could read through the documentation if you want I'm pretty sure in the actual wiki it tells you that it's not going to block YouTube ads. So it's just something to know before you do it. So don't install Pie Hole and think, oh, we're good. I'm never going to see a YouTube ad again. Or Hulu, or I'm pretty sure any of those streaming services with commercials, it's always going to play them. So Pie Hole's not going to do that. Sorry if you thought it did, but it's not. It's going to do way better stuff than just blocking YouTube ads. So for number two, for things you need to know about Pie Hole, is how to configure it as your DNS server for your home network. So you might know that you can configure it as like on windows you can point to your machines that cert use a certain dns server which is great but instead of having to do that on every host on your network you can just use your router and tell it to use pi hole instead and over port 53 it'll listen for pi hole and that'll be the only dns server it listens to i'm gonna show you how to do that real quick because it's way easier than configure it on every host manually to use pi hole as your dns server so I use an Asus router and it's going to be pretty similar on probably any other router you find. You just need to find your LAN settings and then from there it goes under DHCP DNS. And if you come over down here you can see I can actually tell it to manually use a DNS server. And dot .3 is my actual Pi hole that I run. I use another one for my videos to show you examples in but 3 is my main one that I use. So right here I'm telling it to use dot .3 and in return all of my router my router routes all my DNS traffic through Pi Hole to be used instead of me pointing it manually in the new Windows network settings, which you can do if you want only certain users to use it, but it's way easier to have your router just point to it instead of having to set it manually for every host. I think everybody knows where Pi Hole stemmed from, and it's from Raspberry Pi. And it was the whole idea was that you could take a Raspberry Pi, you could put the Pi Hole software on it, and it's going to run a small form factor low power, simple to keep up with DNS server that you could use. So I used to use one of these Pi Zeros. This was actually my DNS server and my VPN for the longest time. And uh, you could even use one of these little 3Bs or whatever you have. But these were the original Pi holes. But these aren't the ones you need to use anymore. You can still use them if you want, but you can Dockerize them now too. So instead of running Pi Hole on our actual Raspberry Pi, you can spin up your Docker machine and you can run Pi Hole if you're Docker. So I'll show you that real quick. So of course, if we come into our trusty portainer using the Pi self hosted template, you can see I actually have Pi hole already in here. But if I come into app templates and when it loads, and if we just search Pi hole, I'm gonna just search Pi, maybe not. There we go. I search Pi hole. They actually have three flavors of Pi hole. Uh, two common ones are the basic Pi hole, and then there's Pi hole unbound. Unbound just makes it like a recursive system for caching the actual DNS queries instead of reaching out. I don't use it. I tried using it once. I didn't really see a big difference in it and I had some hassle. So I don't use it. I have a friend who uses it. It's whatever you want to use and how you ever want to set it up in your environment. I like basic pie hole. It works for my needs. But that's not the point. The point is that you no longer need to run a single Raspberry Pi to run your pie hole instance. If you're like me and you run a system that strictly runs all your Docker containers, I run a server. I actually am moving it over to a mini PC that's going to just run all my Docker containers. And instead of running a Raspberry Pi, some people might write, run like a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig and you can run all your Docker containers on there. And if you put a Pi hole on that machine, it's great. It's a little tiny PC. It's going to do what you need it to do. But 
there's no sense to add extra hardware if you already have a system available. So if you do have a system available, if you have Docker running, you might as well just run Pi-hole on there instead of getting another piece of hardware to add to your network to run Pi-hole. If you don't have a machine running like Docker, let's say already, getting a Raspberry Pi isn't a bad idea. It's small, it's pretty cheap, and they're becoming available again, so you might as well. It's nice to have this little box that can run your DNS server, and you just tuck it away, plug it into your router, and it's all set after you configure it. So you don't need just a Raspberry Pi anymore to use Pi Hole. You could virtualize it, and it works just as good, if not even better, because of how easy it is to blow it out, start over, save a config. It's very simple. I like it. I've been using it that way for hmm, probably about almost a year now, so I recommend virtualizing it if you have the environment to virtualize it. So for number four, Pi Hole isn't just a DNS server, it's also a DHCP server. Now, typically in your home environment, you're probably running a regular consumer-based home network router, which is perfectly fine. It does everything you need it to do, but you might not like the way that it does DHCP, or you might have such a simple router, it might not have a DHCP server in it, which is fine because we have Pi-hole that can run its own DHCP server, and then you can point your router to use it, as long as it has the settings too. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So you've actually come into settings, and then if you look at the top tables, there's DHCP, and in here you can actually enable a DHCP server to run off a of Pi Hole. So I'm not going to because I don't want to break it, but you would just enable it and then you could actually start and we can make your own DHCP pool. So 172 is another set of network ranges, but another common one would be like 192. So you typically would see like 192.168.50.1 and then you might do, I'm going to do it this way, 192.168.50.251 as a range and then you would just point it to your router so my gateway is that one you would just probably the defaults because that's what i would do usually the default settings are pretty good and then you would just select it could show you your dcp leases and your static leases so this is very similar to how it is in your router which i'll show you too so similar to how i just showed you with the dns settings in my actual router Here's the basic configuration for the DHCP pool. So here's the starting address, here's the ending address, the lease time. I'm pretty sure it's in seconds. So it should be seconds to go into however many minutes. I don't know. Usually it uses seconds. And uh, we do it that way and you would enable it. So if you're going to use Pi Hole, you would actually disable your, your DHCP server and your router. And you would make sure it's enabled here and you point it at the right area so it knows to use it. You can make your static leases just like you can in your router and Pi Hole would act as your DHCP server. I know some people like this a lot better than using the actual router's DHCP server. You might like it too if you want to give it a try. Um, I never used it because my router has a pretty decent DHCP server so I always just leave it that way. But if you want to, you might as well give it a try. But that might be something that you might not know that you definitely might need so you might as well look into it if you want to. The fifth thing that you might not know about Pi-hole that you might need is that Pi-hole can actually be split into groups. So you could have certain endpoints on your network be split into certain groups based off what the endpoint is. So let's say you have adults in the house and you have kids in the house and you want the adults to be able to access certain websites but you don't want the kids to be able to access certain websites. You can split the devices that the kids use into their own group and then you could tell Pi-hole to use certain ad lists to permit or deny traffic to certain websites if you want. So let's say you don't want the kids going on, I don't know, a certain website like an online marketplace like Amazon. You don't want the kids on their tablets to be able to get on Amazon and order stuff, but you want the adults to be able to. You could block the kids from doing it, but you can allow the adults to do it. So I'll show you how to do that real quick too. So again, if we come into the dashboard and we come over into groups, we can make new groups. So let's say we have kids and then we have adults. We can enable the groups and go from there. And then we could also go into clients and we can assign the group. So I'm just gonna pick a random, this is actually my machine that I'm on right here. And we'll add that. So now it's a well-known host. So it's listed here and then I can assign it to a group. So I'm gonna put it in the adult category and I'm gonna take it off default because I only want it to be hit the adult sites or we want to do it that way. So if you have it as one of the kids' iPads, let's say, you would add the kid's iPad, you could put a comment so you know what it is, and then you would tag it for the kid's group so it can be limited by that. So, we do that, we do that. Oh, you gotta make sure you hit apply, I guess. I didn't know that. So you hit apply, and now you can see that in the group management, 
this new host is now in the group. So, now if I come over to add lists, we can actually come over here and there are a ton of different ad lists you get if you look on Firebog and if you look around on GitHub, you could probably find a ton of them. And you could probably find ad lists targeted to filter by adult websites, uh, shopping sites, all sorts of stuff. So if you want to restrict your kids' traffic or anybody in the house's traffic by a certain way, you can. But if we come over here, so this is, this is the basic one, we could actually get a group assign and I can assign it that only the adults are impacted by this ad list if I want. So now only that one host is gonna be able to hit the ad list from that. So if you have one ad list that blocks shopping sites, you can assign it to the kids to prevent the kids on their iPad from being able to hit these uh -huh. sites. Um, it's I, same idea with any other kind of ad list or any kind of way you might do it either. But it's a good way to filter out the groups and prevent certain users in the house from being able to do certain things on your network that you might not want them to be able to. So this video covered five new topics, <laughs> five topics about Pi-hole that you might have not known or you maybe did know but you didn't realize how you could implement them and it's going to help if you add it into your home network or your environment for your users, you, and maybe anybody else that comes into the house when they use your network. Uh, like I said, the users. So uh, this was five quick tips. I hope you liked the video. If you have questions or you have other topics about Pi Hole or anything else you might want to see in the future, drop a comment below. I'll look into it and we'll try to make a video as quick as I can. But uh, I hope you guys liked the video. Make sure to subscribe, drop a like on the video because it's helping the channel grow and I'll see you in the next video.